This is How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. I'm Greg, and I have never been a professional bartender. I've never even had a job in a bar. I don't worry too much about precision in technique, because at the end of the day, if the drink you like is in the glass, you did it right. Let's get going. Let's do some tiki stuff. We're gonna make a zombie. This drink usually calls for some straight up overproof 151 rum. Frankly, I'm a human being, and that's a bit strong for my blood, so we're gonna temper that just a touch and swap in some Smith & Cross with it, which is Navy strength. That's 114 proof. Whatever, that's fine. That's strong enough for me. Why am I still talking? Why don't we just make the cocktail already? Let's make the damn thing. We're gonna need three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. Put that in my tin. You need a quarter ounce of grapefruit juice. There it is. In it goes. You need a quarter ounce of something we're gonna call cinnamon syrup. Um, cinnamon syrup, maybe you can see, I don't know. I've got a couple of sticks of cinnamon in there. This is just inverse uh, simple syrup made with demerara sugar and six cinnamon sticks were thrown into the pot when I cooked it. And then I threw a couple more into the bottle so that I could recognize it on my rack. We just need a quarter ounce. Uh, we need a teaspoon of grenadine. I encourage you to make your own grenadine. I have an episode up about that. Uh, I know that my bar spoon is a quarter teaspoon, so it's four bar spoons to make a teaspoon of grenadine. We're gonna need a half an ounce of velvet falernum. You can make your own falernum, um, but John D. Taylor's is pretty damn good, and it's very consistent, and when I've made my own falernum, it has grown mold in a hurry. Falernum is a rum-based liqueur, incorporates a lot of spices, kefir lime leaves, key lime zest, I think cardamom might play a factor in there. Anyway, very aromatic when you smell it. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of uh, cologne my grandfather wore, but it tastes great. We're gonna use this uh, aged blended rum, an ounce and a half of it. In it goes. We're gonna use an ounce and a half of Cuban Havana Club, you remember from season three. Any column still aged rum would work fine here, and that's what this is. In it goes. And I'm gonna use one ounce of Smith & Cross, which is my personal favorite rum. It's Jamaican rum, it's pretty strong, and it's got a lot of funk in it. What is funk? Let's find out. Like buttery fire and a little bit of um, wheatgrass and like herbaceous vegetation. That's what funk is. It's just, it's funky. It's funky, baby. Anyway, one ounce of that. I'm spilling it everywhere. I've had two drinks already today. And we're gonna put in two dashes of something that is called Herbstora. It's a mixture of Angostura bitters and Herb Saint or Absinthe in my case. So it's 50-50. It's just Angostura bitters and Absinthe. You could even keep them separate and just put in a dash of each, honestly. Now we're gonna put in two dashes of this. One, two, we need some crushed ice. Now I crush ice old fashioned style with a Lewis bag and a hammer. Uh, here we go, smashy time, let's go. Give it a quick shake. If I was working in a high volume tiki bar and I wasn't just making this drink for myself while my wife looks on disapprovingly, I would probably use a drink mixer, like a Waring Pro, a Waring Pro. War, it's a W-A-R word, how do you pronounce that? We're going to pour this drink without a strainer into our glass until about there. And now we're gonna put the strainer on and we're gonna gate it. What I mean is hold back the ice and pour through the gate. And that, my friend, is a zombie. And I'm gonna garnish it with a couple sprigs of mint. Give me a good smack. Let that express some oil. Make sure it's really kind of presentational. As I have been told by a couple of bartenders I admire very much, we taste first with our eyes and then with our mouth. And then I'm gonna use blossom of an orchid flower. And I'm just gonna dress it up a little extra because it doesn't hurt to do so. And there it is, a zombie as invented by Don the Beachcomber, most likely in 1934. So this drink opens up like most drinks with a strong garnish with a very olfactory response, right? So you get the mint and the orchid garnish right away. And then you get a kind of a sweetness that is not overpowering, but very pleasant, followed immediately by rum funkiness that goes for days. It is very strong, even in my slightly diminutive form, where I swap out the 
full-on 151 for Navy strength Smith & Cross, which is why it's called a zombie. It kind of makes you make poor choices. And I hope if you like the show that you're willing to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another cocktail. Bye-bye. Did I mention that I was drunk? <laughs>